Hello everyone, this is Helen H. and welcome to my channel, Moss Cottage. I hope everyone is doing well. I wanted to show you this poster here. It is called Barn Quilts of Highland County, Virginia, which is where the ca our cabin is. And there is a thing called barn quilts, which are wooden painted quilt designs that people design themselves. There's a lady here in the county who makes them and some she actually runs a class so that some people can make their own, which I think I'm going to make a barn quilt for, for our cabin. But um, this might be where I got really interested in quilts. And then, you know, watching Janet Nash's video uh, where she was piecing together something with quilts. I'm sorry about the glare. Um, anyway, um, because before that, you know, I like quilts and I've had quilts and stuff, but I never was interested in making anything or using anything. I'm going to get that poster framed and hang it here in my um, craft room and um, so that I can look at those beautiful quilts, quilts and be inspired. And I thought today what I might put on my barn quilt, um, but I'm not going to say until um, I can figure out how to do it. Anyway, that being said, okay, this is how we're going to use, I'll show you what's left of my little pieces here, of those master boards that I made with the quilting magazine pictures. So they got cut up, as you can tell, in lots and lots of different pieces. This is like kind of all that's left is these little pieces here. And um, I'll show you a piece here. You can see they got really mixed media over. I went absolutely crazy with the paints and everything. Um, and just most of most of the quilting stuff got covered. Although you can see bits and pieces of the quilts coming through, which is fine with me. I mean, it's, it is what it is. And I have so many more quilts. Um, if I want to do a plain one, uh, you know, without doing mixed media, I have so many quilt pictures from those magazines and I'm going to get some more. See, like this piece right here, you can clearly see this part of the quilt coming through. So I put paint, I, I splotched paint, I used marker, I stamped, I did all kinds of stuff um, on there to make them very mixed media. And these little pieces here, I might just make little embellishments somehow for my uh, journals, just make maybe little even square embellishments or whatever. But so that's, oh and here's another piece. So that's all that was left from all those big pieces, uh, well those those uh, master boards that I had made last time. So what did I do with them? Well, this is what I did with them. I made wonky houses. I thought it would be so cute to make little houses. So I made this one here with like the little mushroomy shaped roof. And this one here. And this one here that says joy on the roof. And this fun little one with the, the fish scale roof, like I drew in the fish scales and I used a, I think I used just a uniball, a black uniball to do that. Either that or this, the Sharpie fine liner. And then there's this one here. And see in this one you can clearly see the quilt, the quilted piece on the roof there. That star, that was from the quilt pattern. And if you see them in person, you can see through. Now this one right here, I decided to bring back some of the quilting elements. So the two windows and the door are made from pieces from that quilt magazine. And see, it's got little heart dangles from the roof. I like those. And then here's, a, here's one right here. And this one, the door and this heart up here are made from a piece of batik fabric that was pictured here. It came from this ad right here for batik fabric and it just came from a piece of that. <clears throat> so those are the ones that I've done. These, how many do I have? Six, one, seven, one, two, three, four, five, seven. These seven are done. So I have two more that are not done and I thought that we would go ahead and do those ones together. So um, I need to just get into creative juices here. Let me have a sip of coffee. I just got back from town with my girlfriend Mm. excuse me one of my girlfriends up here and we went to town to have coffee at the local coffee shop okay here this strip here is just a piece of of that magazine and it's just a little blue fabric with little flowers on it and i think i'll use that for the door 
for this door. And so they're wonky houses, so nothing has to be straight. Nothing has to be perfect. You know, you just do what you do, right? Now this has this is a piece of fabric that I cut out, and it's a little piece of floral fabric. And I'm wondering if I could use that. It's a little bit big, but I like it. I don't really want to cut that down. So I'm going through. I did use a lot of these scrap pieces on these little houses, like for some of the windows. You know, some some I used magazine pieces, and then some I used these actual. Um, masterboard pieces but this is this one that one is too close to that you can't even see it so let me see here so I've got some stuff cut from a magazine these were things that I had cut out not that but these ones here Ooh, I have these these are the boutique fabrics too I wonder if I should use some of these for let me use this green one here let me use some of this green here for maybe windows on this house here and Let's see, um, I think they need to be a little bit smaller than that. So, you know, like I said, I don't measure, you know, you can be as precise as you want, but since these, I'm calling these wonky houses, obviously I don't want them pre pre precise, right? So we could do something like that with those windows. Now, if you know, on these ones, I've outlined a lot of the stuff with black to make them stand out a little bit. And so, these windows don't really stand out against this background that much, but if I if I highlight them in black and and then um, some white, it will look fine. So I'm just going to leave that right there for now. And let's go to this little guy. Look, this one I made really wonky. His side, the sides of the house are. This is a real like fairy little house here. So let's see what we could use for that. And you know, this is also a great place to use up some of your scraps. Oh, this is very colorful. Let's use some of this on that fairy house. See, this is a picture of a quilt or a pattern. I can't tell if that's the actual quilt or a pattern. But let's use some of that. That's super fun. Um, let's make a door and at least out of this. I have been making my doors and windows not match. You know, let's see. Ugh, my scissors are stuck on my finger. How did that happen? Okay, so that's a cute door there. I I don't know. I haven't done this before. Let me see if I want to make the doors and windows itself. This this fabric is so, or this picture of this quilt is so fun. It would be fun to make the windows out of this too, right? And you know, they're, they are what they are. It doesn't matter. There's no rules, right? They're little wonky houses. I actually like this a lot, making the door just because this is such colorful. Okay, they're a little big, but, I, but I'm, go, I'm gonna make the, the windows and doors the same. So I'm just gonna cut them down a little bit, make them a little bit smaller. And I, you can make whatever shape you want. That one that I showed you here, this one, I made the windows shape like hearts. Um, you can make them whatever shape you want. You can make them triangles, you could make them circles. I do have some that are circles um, also. Okay, so let's see how that looks. Oh, I like that, like that. I think that that's cute. Okay, so let's go ahead and get these down. Now, one thing I wanna say about the master boards, if you saw me make the quilted master boards, I used glue stick, and that's perfectly fine if you're just gonna make a master board with the magazine pictures like that. However, I went with so much wet media over this. I mean, covering them with wet media and stuff. Some of the... Um, glue stick did lift up um, and I had to re-glue it and that was totally my fault because I didn't really think I was going to cover them so heavily with mixed media but if you guys do mixed media you know how easy it is to start with just a little something something and then just end up the whole thing has been redone which is exactly what happened with these which is fine I'm, I'm okay with that and like I said if I can add back some of the elements like the fabrics and the little pieces of quilts to them then it kind of makes pays a nod to what's underneath the mixed media right when you if you can't see it but even this one i can see through some parts of the um uh the mixed media the paints and stuff to see the picture below so i'm just going to put this one on here 
So I will tell you what I'm going to do. I want, I'm going to do a barn quilt. And I, I think what I'm going to put on the my barn quilt. Because see people, when you make a barn quilt, you make it so that it is something... You design it so that it is something that represents you or something you like or something you do. You know, that's why no two barn quilts are the same. I have glued this to this paper. I do that all the time. I get a little carried away with the glue. But anyway, so it's got to be something. And I, originally when I thought maybe I'd do a barn quilt, I was thinking of putting vegetables on it because um, like in the four corners or something, different vegetables because um, we grow vegetables here and we are vegetarians and we love vegetables, but I don't think that's what I'm gonna do. Um, let me just get that extra glue off here. Okay, so now uh, what I wanna do is I'm gonna go ahead, and I did this with all of these guys too. I went ahead and just used a little ink and just inked the edges because I wanna give it kind of a, uh, of, uh, old old look like you know like these are old little little wonky houses so i'm just going like this and of course you could do if you wanted to ink them because you can see the side paper because i used that thick um mixed media paper um so you can see the white but you know whatever the style you're going with you can use whatever color you want. You know, I could have done this in orange or, you know, a different color. It doesn't matter. But for these wonky little houses, for some reason, I fit, thought that having them, like, edged in, in black, I mean, it's actually looking more gray, um, would be good. So then what I did to make the features on the houses was I used a marker. And I used a, this Sharpie a lot to just go around the uh, doors and windows to really make them stand out. So I'm gonna to try to do this so that you can see and that my hand will not so much be in the way. But anyway, so what I want to put on my barn quilt, it came to me this morning because my friend and I, when we went to breakfast this morning and for coffee, we're talking about my favorite birds because they came out last night for the first time ever is the whippoorwills. Yes, they started singing last night and we could hear them. Here's a little doorknob right there. See how cute that is already? And um, let's see, this heart one that I did with the heart windows, I made the doorknob a little heart shape too. But anyway, so the Whippoorwills came out last night and were singing their love songs, and I was so excited. Now, Whippoorwills, I think I've done some videos where I showed them before and used them in my nature journal, the one I finished, not the one I'm working on now. They're quite unattractive to most people. They're brown and white. They do live on the ground. They nest on the ground. They're very hard to see because they're nocturnal, so there's not a lot of, um, they're hard for scientists to really um, see a lot because they, they blend in and they're, you know, whatever. But there are pictures of whippoorwills, and they are one of those kind of birds that are so ugly, they're cute. But I love their little song, and um, so I think I might try to do that. So I've got this, what I wanna do on this little guy here, he's got a little roof here. I think what I'm gonna do is do what I did with this one here. And I'm just gonna really quickly give him a fish scale roof. Where all that is is just um, use, a whole bunch of use. But you wanna make sure that your U goes all the way up and touches the U in front of it because otherwise it's just gonna look like a scallop. So to look like a fish scale, it really has to go all the way up and touch the one in front of it, right? I mean, it's a little wonky house, but if that's the look you're going for, that's what it, I learned that because I did it wrong the first time. And I'm like, okay, that doesn't look like fish scales. And then I figured out why. Okay. Like this. Oh my gosh, it's getting cuter by the second. These are so fun. And guys, even if you don't have a master board... You can use your painty papers. You could use a paper scraps. And I thought, I made them the size that they are, which is the base of the houses started as at two by three, not counting the roofs. 
Then I added the roofs. And of course the roofs are all different sizes and shapes. But um, I did that because I thought that these would be a nice size to make a tag from. And I'm thinking I might want to make a journal that is like house themed or something like that. So look how cute just adding the fish scales is. Isn't that cute? Okay, so then the other thing I want to do on this one is I'm going to go ahead and put the dental molding on like I did on, which one? The, this one right here and this one right here. See how I put this white, the dental molding under there? I'm going to do that to this one too. So you just make your, your black lines and then just little tick marks coming down like this. And mine are so uneven, but that's okay because it's a wonky house. And then I took my Posca paint pen, which I have a love-hate relationship with, as you know, because these things can leak terribly. So what I do is I just kind of draw a little bit with it to make sure there's not a glob of paint on the end because these things can really let go a big blob of paint, even if you're not pushing down very hard. There, so I just did like that. You see the little dental molding? And then I just make some little marks in the window, like there's um, glare on the window. See, isn't that cute? Now, I may go back at some time and add some flowers or something, you know, at the base of the houses. But for right now, I just wanted to show you, you know, what I was doing here. So on this one here, these windows are super dark here. So we're going to get our paint pen again. And I think I'm going to go around the windows again and get Holly's hair out of the Posca paint pen. And I think I'm going to go around the windows again, but I'm going to go around them in white because they're just so dark. And so I've got white and black going on here, but that's okay. Some of the black peeks through. Um, and maybe I'll do it this way so you can actually see, a little, just draw under the black so that you can see a little more of the black and white. But that makes the window show up a little bit better. And let me just make my little white marks for the glare in the window. Like that. And do I want to go around the door in white too? Yeah, let's go around the door in white too. I can always go back in black. Okay, so that's that. I think I might actually go back and do that again in black. But what I want to do is take a marker and I'm using... Now, here's the other thing. Be careful with your pens because you can ruin them with if you use mixed media stuff. Um... You know what? I think I better use my fat sharpie, my fatter sharpie. This is a this is called a fine point, but it's it's not that fine. Um, I'm going to go ahead and I'm doing it this way so I don't smudge that white. I'm just going to do scallops from the top of the roof hanging down like this, like that. Do the scallops, and then take my white marker. And just color in those scallops real quick. And really all I'm doing is just making a tiny little dot in there. Because this is so liquidy. Um, and you know I don't know why why Posca doesn't redesign their pens. Because I know I'm not the only one who has trouble with it. I've seen other people have trouble with it too. So now I did the white around the doors and the windows. And I'm not loving it totally. So I'm just going to use my... This is a... This is a uniball, a black uniball, and I'm just going to kind of scribble over the white and just do like that. And I think I will like that a little better. And see, I am really just scribbling, guys. Scribble, scribble, because that's what makes them wonky, right? Sometimes we just have to be loose and let go, right? So I like that a lot better. Look, can you see? All right, so then what I just want to do is come back and let's use something else. Let's use, okay, so guys, I bought these markers. There's a gold one and a silver one at um, Dollar Tree. They are called Doodlers, and I don't have the packaging, but I got them at, at Dollar Tree, and it was a gold one and a silver one, and they're fairly, uh, it's ballpoint and it's fine tip. These are awesome pens. 
go spend a dollar and 25 and get yourself some of these and they will write over anything and they are really metallic and very pretty i used these doing some other mixed media the other day and they are great okay so there's the other one right there and like I said, you can, and now, you know, because I'm, I'm up here, I don't have all my supplies, but I might go and put some stickers on them or add some little trees and gardening things around them, you know, or, or whatever. But they, they're a great size. You know, I could punch a hole and use the back, use the back for a tag, you know, a tag for journaling. And see, a lot of them have paint marks on the back from when I did the mixed media. I love that. I, that doesn't bother me at all. The ones that don't are ones I cut up and then I realized if you watch my masterboard video that I did some actually on the packaging and it had writing on the back. I had to go back and cover it with paper so that I could actually write on it if I was going to use them as a tag, right? So there's my little wonky houses. I hope you give these a try. They're super fun. Um, and see right here, this is starting to lift up. This is because um, I used glue stick on the original master board and no big deal. I, you just glue it right back down like that. If it comes up, just glue it right back down. Um, but next time if I, if I do a master board, I'm going to use a heavy duty glue uh, if I think I'm going to go ahead and do mixed media over it. So I hope you like this video. I hope you like my little wonky houses. I think they're super cute. I can just even just stick these in a pocket in for no reason in a journal. I can just use them as decorations on a journal, you know, just embellishments for whatever. But I think they're super cute and they were fun to make and fun to decorate. This is something that is super um, um, relaxing to do when you take your time and just decorate like that. So I hope you liked this video. Please give me a thumbs up if you did. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I ask that you do. And until the next video, I hope you're all truly blessed. Bye-bye.